Sportsman's Adventures is presented by Yamaha. I think most anglers would agree that fishing in the Florida Keys is one of the best places to bend a rod. But sometimes you have to go a little further to get the good stuff. So I'm hauling my trusty Maverick on my Ameritrail trailer to Key West. Yeah, yeah, I know that Key West is known for its touristy destinations like Sloppy Joe's and Mallory Square. But for me, it's about the bonefish. I hear that the Grey Ghost is making a big comeback, and I want to have a face-to-face -face meeting. Enter Captain Brandon Sear, a fourth-generation fisherman from Key West. He knows the waters, he knows the fish, and he knows the techniques. Only a mama could love that mouth. Bringing home the snapper. Hey, look at that. You know that saying about being in the right place at the right time? That's what we're doing here. The Bones love to hang out at this bar after lunch while the current is ripping. Nice, Jig. Jig, got him. Jig, Jig. 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 Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Brandon. So, what are the main species that you find on the flats of Key West? Well, we got the, the flat slam, which is tarpon, permit, and bonefish. Those are kind of the main three fish that we have. Uh, tarpon typically down here are February until about October. <clears throat> and then uh, permit and bonefish are both year round down here, as long as the water temperature stays warm. That's the great thing about down here is even when it does get cold, we have barracudas, jacks, redfish. These bonefish will stay around pretty much unless it's a pretty bad cold front and the water temperature goes into the 60s. Have the bonefish become more popular absolutely in, and i think that really West? kind of started taking place in probably the last six years uh-huh um you know even when i was a kid growing up with my dad if we had five six shots in a day that was considered a great day right where now if we don't catch five or six you know and with 15 20 shots it's a bad day nice. and i think a lot of that has to do with conservation you know a lot of people are starting to understand you know try to keep them in the water as long as possible and you know a lot of uh, guides aren't really chumming for them like they used to. Because a lot of times when you chum, the fish will take and swallow the hook before the angler even realizes he's eating it. Right. Well, this guy ate it twice, I think. And uh, the first time I lifted the rod, which is the proverbial mistake that everybody makes. You know, when you you're know. handling these bonefish too, a lot of times when you want to relax, they have that same thing that a shark do, where you flip them over, they kind of go into a trance. They'll stay nice and calm. Like we're doing all the uh, blood samples with bonefish tarpon trust. Uh huh. You flip these fish over like this, and you can handle them as long as you want. They stay in the water, nice and alive. And as soon as you roll them over, they're ready to kick and take off. Right. Look at that blue tail. I like it. Look at that camo. And you just take and hold them over the grass, and it just blends in. That's why he was named yep. back when, long before you and I were even <laughs> born, the Keys Veteran Guides. Yep. named him the Gray Ghost of the Flats. I imagine that was probably one of the guides out of Isla Mirada, you know? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny because Isla Mirada, that's like really where bone fishing kind of took off in the Keys. Yep. Key West was never known for bone fishing until like about the last 10 years. Right. Which is crazy because now, you know, all of our tournaments, our fish down here are putting up a lot more numbers in the Isla Mirada. I don't know if it's, are there fish are migrating down here or what, but it's, I'm not complaining about it well, at all. It makes you wonder, go ahead and take the jig out of him and we'll let him go, but it makes you wonder if habitat, let, let's think, let's talk about habitat for a second. If habitat has the ability only to support so many fish per square foot or per square yard or per square mile, as the population due to conservation grows, then that has a tendency to push fish into other places. Yeah. You agree with that? I can tell you I've seen that firsthand in a duck pond in Louisiana with redfish. You know, you go, oh man, how could you not put it? You go back there the next day and more fish have moved in and now the next pond over has got fish and it didn't have it early in the week. 
Yep. You know? All right, you ready to let him go? Yeah, man. Hey, you said nice it. Buddy. You said it. You called it. It was just like you just. Did you write the textbook oh, on dog. this path? <laughs> You did it's awesome. Cool, man. You yeah, said, Rick, we're going to pull into this place. We're going to wait for the tide to get a little lower as we, as the tide's falling. What will happen is it'll mud along, and as it'll be pulling into the current, sure enough, we were going back over here to set up to make a sandwich. And you said, here they come. Yep. So as that tide Three starts to drop. Mudding. Yeah, and that's what a lot of these fish, they're, they don't really leave the flat. Those fish are very territorial. So it really just comes down to learning and where they're going to be on that flat, because if you have a group of 50 fish on a mile long flat, you have to try to pinpoint when the tides are going to be there. And that's what we're using. We're using the water dropping as almost a funnel. Instead of trying to find these fish spread out over a large area, as this water starts emptying out, it's making the flat smaller and smaller and smaller. So there's less water that they can be in. Yeah. Just so the of size depth. of the saucer went from this big to this. Exactly. The needle in the haystack with a smaller haystack. Uh, I'm oh, impressed. Dude. I'm Let's get impressed. A couple more. Keep writing that story, and we're going to be catching them on the Ricky Red Rod, baby. My own rod series from <laughs> Makuma. That thing did pretty good. Red's dead, man. You got to catch him. You catch him with a red rod. And make it. Catch him. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Rapala. Another great day. Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. Okuma. Inspired fishing. VMC, your expert in hooks. And Startron, cures and prevents fuel problems. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. As close as you're going to get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Guatemala. They're here, man. This has been a 20-year run, buddy. These things haven't left. There's no cycle. When it comes to sail fishing, this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Building Conservation Trust, or BCT, is Coastal Conservation Association's national habitat program. BCT is striving to be the largest program of its kind in the United States by restoring degraded habitats, creating new habitats, advancing the science of coastal habitat and marine fisheries conservation, fostering habitat stewardship, and educating coastal communities of the value of conservation. Visit www.buildingconservation.org to learn more on how you can make a difference. Thanks for watching Sportsman's Adventures. You can catch all the happenings, contests, and appearances by visiting us on sportsmansadventures.com. There you can find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, but best of all, you never have to miss a show because you can find full episodes of Sportsman's Adventures along with tips and techniques, bonus clips, and even some bloopers. Also, if there's a product that we use during the show, that you would like more information on, you can find links to our sponsors at the bottom of the home page. All right, Rick, I got a fish right there at 11. See him? Yeah. Go ahead. One more. Perfect. All right, let it drop for a second. Wait. Strip. Strip. Got him. Good job, buddy. Yeah, man. Nice. There he is. Coming back this way a little bit. Now he goes. Now he's taking off. Waiting for him to wake up. Yeah. Hey man. Exactly like you said, it came across that white sand. 
it's always so awesome to fish with a guy who knows the fish, is a student of the fish, and he can coach you to the game situation before the game happens, you know? Yeah, well, it's just, you know, it's just putting a lot of hours out here, and you start to see these fish get into these patterns, and you just gotta watch and follow what happens. Now, you guys catch bonefish all year round in Key West? Yeah, you know, pretty much all year round, and we have some months that are better than others. Pretty much from uh, March through October is really good for bone fishing. Pretty much every day we have shots. Uh, we have a cold front come through, you know, like January, February. Uh -huh. That water temperature drops down into the 60s. They'll shut down for a day or two, but as soon as that water temperature hits 70, they're back up on the flats. Gotcha. So for us, it's a great fishery because it's something that we can play with year round, you know? Right. Man, it is just so beautiful. You cannot, for a fly fisherman, Brandon, you can't ask for better conditions. Lots and calm, clear water, good sun, sunlight. Sun, yeah. not a thunderstorm. Is that often this time of year can mess with you, you know? Yeah, that's the kind of thing, you know, most time though, when these storms pop up like this, they're not really moving a whole lot, so you can typically run around them. Can't really complain too much. See how once they saw it, how fast they charged to it? That's the biggest thing is just letting them see it. You know, you, just like you said, put it out in front of them. You know, the other thing that's so cool about bone fishing is that on that presentation, so different because a lot of times when they eat a fly, they swim at you so you don't really feel the bite. Yeah. But if you see the fish reacting in a positive way, he got excited. The next thing you do, I learned this from Lefty was, Little strip, strip, strips, and if you think he's on it, the long strip, and that way if he hasn't eaten it, all you gotta do is go back to your little strips. Yeah, you and you know, sometimes too, that long strip, when they see that going away from them kind of fast, it'll get that instinct bite as well. You know, if they're not eating the small strips, right. that long strip kind of makes them think that their prey is trying to get away from them, kind of gets that, especially like in that situation where we had four or five fish with the competition feeding mode going. There we go. Nice Key West bone. Little fly in your face. So cool. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, man. If you fly fish, it's just such an advantage because of how soft you can make the presentation. And it's very difficult. You need my pliers? I think I might. I'm gonna try to pop it out. My finger here. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Did you get it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful fish. Yeah. It's crazy how much lighter his colors are right here in between these stripes. Uh-huh. Gotta help him blend in with that sand. Right. Master of camouflage. He is. I love it. I love it. All right, buddy. We'll see you next time. Thanks for playing. Grow big and strong. <laughs> Go on with your bad self, Mr. Bullfish. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Power Pole, Swift, Silent, secure, contender boats, always in the game. Building Conservation Trust and the Coastal Conservation Association, partners in conservation. Casa Vieja Lodge, experience five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala, Williamson Lures for the Pelagic Playground, and Suffix, always use the best line. Remember the glory days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. It's one of the most ancient forms of hide-and-seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. For the bass that thinks it's a bulldog, for the walleye that thinks it's a freight train. For the tuna 
that thinks it's a torpedo. For the tarpon that thinks it's a tarpon. You need the mono that thinks it's a braid. Suffix Advance. New advanced mono with HMPE braid molecules for strength, abrasion resistance, and low stretch. Suffix Advance. The mono that thinks it's a braid. The Key West Marriott Beachside Hotel is our base of operation for this adventure, and we're glad to be back. We're staying in this beautiful three-bedroom suite that overlooks the pool. This place is so inviting. Live music, a full bar, plenty of loungers, and of course, some local wildlife. But one of the biggest upgrades since the last time we were here is the dock. Now we can tie up the boat and keep it there overnight. This definitely keeps things simple in the morning, and this is something that you may want to consider or keep in mind for your plans to Key West. Got him. Yeah, baby! Oh, that's a big one, too, big, big permit. Big, big, big one. Let him get hooked. Good job, buddy. Great cast. Thank you. You gonna go back over that bank? There's a lot of rocks up here, so just keep your rod tip up. Okay. I'm gonna try to stay as close as I can to them until uh, we get over the top. I'm probably gonna drop motor. Okay. There's about 30 of them there. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. I'm gonna go light right now. Yeah, he's, yeah, just he's stay, a... stay light on them until we get on that, once we get on that other side of that channel there, yeah. there's no more rocks. He's over the ledge or he's, yeah, you're fine. Right, he's there's, right, there's, right there's on it, I think. I'm gonna cut you off on, knock on wood. I'm just gonna keep motoring towards them nice and easy. You see those lips? Yeah. That was the first thing, as soon as you said you got them, I looked up and I could see four or five big pink lips right there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go back up to him since he's going over those rocks again. Okay. Good coaching, Brandon. You know, that's always a part of it when you're guiding, communicating with the peoples. Well, he isn't making it easy, is he? Look at the rocks. I don't know if you see any big rocks I'm about to go over. I'm kind of driving into that glare there. You're going over a bunch of them. What size rod is that, Rick? This is the medium heavy Ricky Red by Kuma. It's rated for... 15 to 20. I got it loaded up with some 10 pound suffix 832. Is that that uh, new braid? It's 832 ghost. Yeah. Giant rocks down there. Big ledge. Yeah. Yeah, that's got some lobsters in it. I bet. Let's we'll come back and grab dinner in a little bit. Okay. I'll let you do that. I'll stay in the boat and make <laughs> sure that the bubbler's keeping them good and alive. Of all the fish that I've, I've ever targeted in my life, there is nothing that makes my heart go like a permit. Yeah, there's so much fun to catch. Whether it's on a wreck, you know what I mean? A reef or whatever, or whether it's in the shallow stuff. Sight fishing to any fish is just so bomb. Or as your generation say, Nope. <laughs> yeah, you get a 30 pound fish in two feet of water, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I see you. What a stud, dude. Oh, that's a beast. Be pounder, I don't think so, but man, he is big. That low light and our adrenaline. <laughs> they yeah. look a little, a little bigger. <clears throat> All I know is he's on my line. <laughs> All right, this is the, the nervous moment right here. Here we go. All right. All right. <laughs> hey, 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 that's exactly Woo. what I'm talking about. That, look at that, man. It was it's so simple. classic permit fishing, pulling down an edge with the white 
looking for him in the white, see him swimming down the white, it was all over the place. It was so cool, man. Yeah. So cool. Those big pink lips, seeing them, yeah. that was the first thing I saw. As soon as you saw him, that's all I could see moving through the water were those little pink lips. Yeah. Man, he dropped right on him. What a wild fish, man. Those big eyes, God, it's so there. alien. He went up there on those, around those rocks. I thought he was gonna oh, get us. I, I was shaking. My hands were still shaking a little bit. <laughs> Brandon, about as good as it I gets, must man. say that four generations, you have learned quite a lot, my friend. <laughs> quite a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and take this hook out and we'll get him back in the water and let Sounds him go. Good. Look at those eyes. I see them. Come here, buddy. Get that out. There we go. All right. A little BMC. All right. Let him go. Yeah, let him go. Good job, uh, dude. All right. She's ready to go. I'm going to let her go. Whenever you're ready. All right, buddy. Nice. Nice. Yeah! Oh, man. Grand slam. One more. We might have to go do this. One more. We might have to go do this. You think you can find me a Tarpinski? Yeah, I can find you a Tarpin. Okay. Let's make her happen. Okay. Sportsman's Adventures is brought to you by Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Maverick Boat Group. Makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Soft Science. Supreme Comfort Footwear. The American Fishing Tackle Company. Any fish? any water since 1958 the florida keys and key west come as you are and garmin join the club Entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Now, it's time to finish off the Key West Slam with a tarpon. We have no problem finding them, but they aren't interested in eating. We have fished for them in all kinds of places on both sides of the island and nothing. All we need is one. Is that barracuda? No. Good job, Rick. Hey, baby. Maybe it is a barracuda. Right? It's kind of thin to be a target. It looked like one there. Is he going around that post? I don't, don't know. Yep. Yep. I got him. No, it's no, a target. Start boarding. Get the leader. Get the leader touch. Got our slam. We got it. There it is, baby. Yeah. There it is. Come here, you little sucker. All right. I'm going to come down there and I'll grab it's him for Murphy you. It's the Murphy size, the little short one. Brandon. Yeah, buddy. Come on back here. <laughs> 14 foul balls. <laughs> and I got lucky. Oh, man. What a beautiful little fish, though. Yeah, man. Yep. He might only be about three pounds, but in my mind, he's 100 right now. Yep. It's so cool that we have him in your hands. So it's just, you know, it's a hard thing to do. And as long as you can do it within 24 hours, it works. You know? Look at him. Little baby tarpon, man. That little, 
get his fly out. We'll get him back in the water. Good job, man. You need my pliers? I think I'll be able to get them out. You all right? 8.30 at night. Just the moon's coming up. You can barely see him rolling. The sun's fully setting to the west, Key West. Wow. That doesn't happen every day, does it, Buff? That uh, does not, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Poon. I don't think I've appreciated a little tarpon so much in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you feel. I've been there plenty of times. The, the uh, drama of trying to get the third fish. Yep, that's how it goes. Yep, cool. You ready to let this little guy go? Let him go. Let him go. All right, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Real big and strong. I'll see you in about... 20 years. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. We yeah, did. buddy. Good job, Mr. Coaster. Good job. Appreciate you very much staying out that extra 14 hours. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Yeah, man. All right, let's go get a drink. Since we got this great suite at the Key West Marriott Beachside Hotel, we might as well take advantage of the full kitchen to cook our catch and reminisce about the day with the crew and some friends. What a great way to cap off another sportsman's adventure. Keep up with the latest sportsman's adventures news and events by logging into our website at sportsmansadventures.com and following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Coming up next week on Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. The team at Yamaha Outboards needs to put some serious hours on the new 425 before going to market. So they ask us to go fishing and put some hours in. <laughs> Not only did we catch some kings, we played with new tech, made some new friends, and enjoyed the oldest city in America.